Hey gang, I'm looking at my emails. Uh, and typically, I don't uh, bother doing requests, but uh, I've got an hour to kill. And I actually had some stuff in the truck, so we're going to play with this a little bit. Anyway, uh, Dennis Zidane 1 says, Hi Mikey, can you please do a video on jobs where successfully diagnosed a unit with a short pro tool? Please do several scenarios where it's worked. I'd like to share this with my apprentice classmates. Thanks. So I've uh, put together a little board. Hopefully this will go okay. Uh, just a little piece of plywood, and I've got a thermostat on it. Uh, just a little tie-in board for my own uses. I might try something different later. A contactor here, which in this case is going to represent the outside condenser. And a, uh, a control board off of the gas furnace. I'm not actually going to use a control board other than I'm going to plug it in. You'll see the light flashing, but because I have all the safety wires removed that would normally go to safety switches, it's not going to give me the voltage I need. So ignore some of this extra wiring like this where I've jumpered around to actually get 24 volts to the thermostat. Um, and we will go from there. So bear with me here and we'll, we'll get... All right, this is the tool we're going to be using here. It's just a little short pro. Uh, I'll try and put a link in the show notes for you. If you don't have one at your supply houses, uh, you can order online. The cost online is the same as what I paid. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. So you might have to pay a little shipping if you order one. But anyway, um, let me get this plugged in here. And we'll go from there. Typically, let's, let's start on the inside. Typically, a control board, if you have a modern furnace or air handler, a lot of the new control boards will have a fuse. And as you can see... This has a little 3 amp car fuse on it, that's all it is. Some of them will have 5 amp car fuses. Um, older systems will not. Uh, a lot of the older systems you won't have a control board at all and just all runs off sequencers, relays, and, and such. Um, if you have to replace a transformer at any point in time on an older system uh, that does not have a control board and a fuse, clip one of the low voltage wires. Uh, it doesn't matter which one, it doesn't really matter. And install a 3 or a 5 amp uh, car fuse. Preferably, if you can, I keep a bunch of these little blue plastic coated uh, ends here instead of just the plain steel ones because you don't have to bother wrapping it with tape and it's a lot easier to, to get in there and say, oh yeah, I've got a flashlight and see it instead of having to peel tape off and mess with it. But there you go. So, in this case, we're going to pretend this is a straight cool system. And uh, we'll go ahead and do a call, set it to cool. I'm winging this. I haven't practiced it all. So we're going to... All right, so... Got to love that. Quiet. Yeah, I couldn't get a new transformer. I had to pull a cruddy one off the truck. <laughs> so we have a call for cooling, and uh, no problem at all. So normal voltage settings... In this case, uh, if I, at this point, decided to, to do something about this, uh, to create a short, it would pop this fuse as the way I have it set up. The board's being bypassed at the moment. So I, I should have put my tool on there first. Let me do that real quick. All right, we're back. I had to, uh, I put the tester in line, but I had to wait on the thermostat. These modern thermostats have a five minute delay. So as soon as I cut the low voltage and I reapplied it, it made me wait for five minutes. But for our scenario here, where we've gotten so far, we've opened the uh, air handler or gas furnace access way to get to whatever wiring harness setup they have. Some of the wiring may be external to the unit. In a lot of cases, they'll have it wire nutted outside of the unit, and you can get to it there. So I have uh, gone in this case. I've pulled my wires. I've installed my little tester right there. If it was a board, you would have pulled the fuse and you would put the little alligator clips, one on each, and it would work just the same there. And right after that, I uh, would have taken my little handy-dandy clamp that I watched one of the other guys use in one of their videos to clamp onto the door safety switch, if it has a door safety switch. Instead of using tape, this is a lot easier. And then reapplied power uh, with the thermostat turned completely off. For this next segment, I've just removed the thermostat so I don't have to fool with the five minute delay on cool every time. And I will manually, uh, and, and sometimes it's easier to, to troubleshoot a short if you pull the thermostat, because sometimes the thermostat is the problem. But, uh, so if you can run your tests without the thermostat on the wall or without it hooked in, and uh, 
and everything works, then that's a good indication of where a problem was. But right, what we're going to do right now is I have uh, jumpered my wire up here. Um, let me undo this a second here. So let me undo that. Yeah. I'm going to put a short. I'm going to create a short in the low voltage outside wiring. This represents the condenser unit. And this is the 24 volt wiring going to the condenser. So I'm going to create a short somewhere between the indoor section and the contact or outside or where the low voltage ties in. So in this case, I've just now created a dead short. This could be a coil that's shorted with windings. It could be dog chewed wires. It could be a weed eater and uh, at some point the sun has baked the enamel off these and they're touching each other or touching the copper ground, uh, copper pipe and shorted to ground. It could be anything on that circuit. So that's what we're going to pretend something that circuit is fried. So now I'm upstairs, I have my door open and I have my tester in line and I'm going to take a jumper. I'm going to jumper from R, the hot, over to Y. I pulled Y off for simplicity's sake just so I can get to it easy for the video. And we're going to create a short. All right, uh, we have just did a Y call for air conditioning. And I come down and my tester light is uh, complaining loudly. So at this point, we know there's a short somewhere in the low voltage circuit going to the outside. At that point, you track it down to the outside. You can come to the outside at this point, and if you don't see any wiring issues outside, uh, it doesn't look like it's chewed or shorted, anything like that. At this point, you could pull... Uh, the terminals off, say pull one of the terminals off the contactor. And we'll just pretend uh, for the sake of argument that uh, this pulls the contact this, that off there. And my light is still tripped at this particular moment, so we'll go back upstairs and I will remove power from it and I'll let it sit for a second and let uh, let the, the trip reset inside the tester. And that's assuming that I pulled one of these off out here and then we will go back to connecting it again. It did not trip. Um, we're pretending I have one wire pulled off out here completely. So if it didn't trip and you remove one wire off the contactor, then you know the contactor coil is, is shorted internally in some way, uh, shape or form. If, if it doesn't, the contactor, uh, if it's still tripped, then the wiring externally here looks good and the thermostat is pulled um, then you know the problem is in the wiring between here and the house. It might be rat chewed up in the attic. A lot of chances that's it's very possible. About a buck for every rat chewed wire I've seen. <laughs> but uh, so that's one good example there, and uh, to do with the wiring there. So there's not a lot of. I don't have a heat pump wiring scenario set up, so we'll have to see if we can come up with something else. But uh, that's a good sampling of, of the tester. There's other ways you can do the testing without doing that. You can, the harder way, if you want, is to, um, to remove, I mean, you could come up here, put a fuse in line. If, um, if you didn't have a tester, um, once you replace transformer, go outside and uh, remove both of the low voltage wiring off of... Uh, off the contactor and then come up here and pull your Y wire and uh, your common wire and use your meter in ohm setting or or just if you have a test setting on there, a continuity setting and you would test your wires for continuity in this case and let's uh, let's do a test there for continuity here